what do I think governments should be responsible for? Okay, I think um, immigration. Okay, immigration control, bo- immigration control slash border security. Mm-hmm. I think um, general negotiations with other countries, whether this is a trade agreement, certain types of trade agreements, or just anything that's you know, like we've got this pandemic going on right now. Okay, you you need some level of inter country communication. Okay, if you have like you know, that's why that's why I'm not fully in the anarchist camp, right? So, well, anarchists, yeah. it's a uh, it goes against the laws of nature. So if you look at any predatory pact or any type of tribal yeah. uh, non-human non-homo sapiens like mm-hmm. let's talk about chimpanzees monkeys wolves there's a hierarchical level of a society Always. structure within that tribe yeah yeah exactly so it may as well be legitimate <laughs> yeah i know seriously yeah, yeah it may as well be legitimate um i do also think the government should uh be in charge of uh so like policing i'm cool with fire departments i don't think that's I mean, these are that could technically probably be privatized, but I'm cool with that. Um, what other big ones? Policing, like just justice system, federal justice system, and prisons. I'm not into the idea of private prisons. I think no, that, private prisons are worse, man. Yeah, I fucking think that horrendous. Wrong, yeah, I think that creates the wrong incentives and things like that. I'm not opposed to you know public school public schooling. I think I think when it comes to things like schooling. Um, in universities and stuff, I, I think it's cool to have both options, right? How do you then okay. eliminate the issue you have today where all the student loans are guaranteed by the government? You create the worst incentive model possible. Sorry, the, government, again. the problem with government being <clears throat> inside public schooling mm-hmm. is the financial incentive model, right? So it's one, A, the same curriculum. So everyone's getting taught the same thing. But B, also the incentive model is broken because the school becomes in a diploma mill because the yeah. school's tuitions are backed by the government. So they just want to pump Mm-hmm. students intuition as much as they can they don't give a fuck they have zero consequences like all this yeah. money is backed by the government yeah honestly i i don't have a strong opinion on that because i need to look into it in more detail and i don't want to just say something random which i haven't haven't researched so that could be one where it's good to have a but so i've already gone from the ones that i think are like 100 percent absolutely essential yeah and i'm now talking about the ones where i can see the to me it's it's a bit of a sliding scale um, and then, you know, next you'd come to something like, uh, healthcare, for example, mm. where it's very, where I'm very, I'm very 50, 50 on that one. Right. I'm very 50. Okay. So I, UK, I times where, UK and Canada are the same pretty much when it yeah, comes similar. to healthcare. It's yeah. so very similar. Right. Okay. So I always talk about this America, the Americans say, Oh, Canadian great healthcare. I'm like, okay, hold your horses. We have one, it's not free. I don't know where this word free comes from. My taxes pay for it. So Nothing's I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, you know there's that. no free lunch. Like, yeah, it hurts <laughs> my fucking head. It's free. Yeah. What do you mean free? It's free, actually free slave. At, what I say is free at the point of service. Yeah, it's, it's it's slave labor. I work and they take my income and I pay for it. So yeah. it's not free. So what what's good about our socialist healthcare system? I break my hand. I get in a car accident. Something that requires emergency service, it's good for. Now, you might wait a little bit depending on what's wrong with you, but more or less the emergency side of things are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, what's horrible about our healthcare system is preventative health, Mm. like horrible. So this, for my my wife's a naturopathic doctor, there's X amount of things that you're allowed to do in the private industry, which is not really private. Mm -hmm. And so I always give this example and there's millions of other Canadians. This way, there's a whole cottage industry in Canada where it's like a healthcation, where they go to other countries, get a vacation, but get healthcare for super cheap or or dental. Mm -hmm. And so I want to, you know, I want to check on my like liver and kidney. So you have to go to nephrologist, but it's not like life threatening. I just want to fucking check it, you know? Yeah. Well, okay. You can go wait seven months, seven fucking months, seven months for a fucking x-ray. Yeah. I can go to Buffalo and pay a couple of bucks and get it that day. Yeah, definitely. Like what the fuck? When when it comes to healthcare, I think, um, I mean, I think I'm, I'm fairly cool with the UK system because both options are there. You guys have both. Yeah. If you want to go private, you can go private. Yeah. Do, you, do you not have both in the not Canada? full private. No. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, so that's quite yeah. a big difference then. That's yeah, actually quite I can't a big get difference. an MRI. There's no private MRI. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see, so, so that is a legitimate difference. So in the yeah. UK, it's like there's both. So if you wanted to go like fully private and you just wanted to pay the extra money and do all that yourself, you yeah. can, right? That's it doesn't good. matter if it's dental or operations or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can, you can do that. Um, but then of course, there's also the NHS. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, okay, cool, fair. You know, you, you've, you've kind of got both. I feel kind of similar with schools. It's like, okay, well, 
there are private schools. If you want to send your child to a private school and you can afford it or whatever, and you think the benefit's worth it, cool, that's there. Um, if you are happy to for your child to go to public school or whatever, cool, that's also there. I think um, on both of those issues, I can see in both of those sectors, I can see the issues and the pros and cons. Like if you went all the way with one or all the way with the with the other, right? If you if you only have private healthcare, for example, and there's no there's no public healthcare option, then even even ethically, I mean, it, it's a weird one because as someone who tends more libertarian, of course, you want to. I'm I'm big in on minimizing minimizing taxes. I'm not like an totally above. I think. It, in theoretically, well, yes, it would be lovely to abolish taxes, but we've already established that we need some type of government and some type of military and whatever. So I don't know, man. That, These days, the, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So yeah. we're entering something called modern monetary theory. So how okay. how the financial system works, and you know, everything's based on the U.S. Even the sure. pound is based. On, that's the hedge of the world. So how money's printed in the United States is you have the Treasury, which is the government. And you have the Fed, which is people. Don't, it's a private company. For the yeah, most it part. is. The treasury issues government bonds or any collateral. Even now they were talking about directly issuing stock as collateral for printing out money. So they go mm -hmm. to the Fed and like, here's the collateral and the, Fred, and the Fed prints out money. This is what we saw in QE2, QE3 in 2008 printing. And now we've gone exponential. It's like, I don't fuck, $7 trillion of printing money. Yeah. So, so everyone's watching or listening. The treasury must put up some form of collateral for the Fed to print money. Modern monetary theory eliminates all collateral, non-collateral, like there's no need for collateral. The treasury, in fact, and can print their own money on demand as much as they want, and debt doesn't matter at all, ever. Which brings up the question, if there is zero collateral on money printing, there is no cap as how much you can print. Since you are the hedge of the world and you have the military force behind you, yeah. why on earth have tax? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, when I you can, mean, you can, can you can to. press a button right now and literally print another ten trillion dollars. Why the <laughs> fuck do you need my tax? Well, to to minimize inflation. Well, oh no, yeah, I don't know. That's what they I don't say. Know. I'd need to, you know, I'd, I'd say it's something I'd need to. It's something. Oh, I'd no, no, to there's an answer more. to that. It gives yeah. you an illusionary. It gives you illusionary sense that that money has a meaning, has has value. That's it. Yeah. Well, like that. That's important to maintain because, I mean, if 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 money is going to work in any sense, then the people need to believe in it. And if they don't, then it's a, it's Zimbabwe. It's, it's, it's literally, <laughs> it literally becomes worthless. You know, m money itself is just a very interesting concept in terms of what it. It's one of those things that I think very few people really know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone knows what it is, but almost nobody really knows what it is. It's just kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's an interesting thing, man. But I don't know, man. With with me, I'm fairly one. One, I'm just open minded. Mm. And I'm also, I have my, my sort of there, I have things that, you know, I have very strong convictions about and very strong principles on and whatever. But when stuff comes to, when it comes to politics in terms of actual sort of policies, I'm very much, I'm pretty, I, I'm not like a, I'm not, I'm certainly not, not a pure pragmatist but I'm somewhat pragmatic. So I have my like certain principles and whatever, but I also recognize, okay, look, you know, there, there's gotta, there's gotta be some, it, it's, it's why, it's why I think it's, I'm, I'm not really a fan of being so easy to box or just having one ideology. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you speak to someone who's like a pure, pure, pure anarcho-capitalist and like rigid on that, then it's like, okay, I get, I get what you're saying from a from an intellectual ideological perspective or whatever, but given where we currently are, right, no matter what country you're talking about, it's like we need to we need to work within the frame the context. Uh, Narcocapitalism yeah, yeah, will work yeah. unless every single country in the world adopts it. Yeah, it's like look, I, I get the theory and I think it's interesting, right? It's fun to talk about or whatever, but we need to be pragmatic here, okay? Mm -hmm. You've already got the government. They're not gonna suddenly be like, you know what, guys. We are all going to resign. We're going to just abolish taxes and just do get on with. You know, it's it's like that's not that's not going to happen. So we can take some of those ideas and think, oh, okay, maybe maybe that is a governmental overreach there. Like that can yeah. we can bring that in. We can bring that in. 
or when you've got people who are, I, I don't know how in this day and age anyone can be like a pure communist, but they still do exist. Right? <laughs> someone is like a full blown commie and thinks the government should like run everything. And like, they're just stuck in this ideology again. I'm kind of like, illness, I'm like, come on, man. Like, how are you? Firstly, that's been tried many times and we've seen what happened. But also, why, why are you so confident? You, you already know that you already are acknowledging yourself that the government has a lot of failings and these leaders and politicians, you're, you yourself are saying you don't trust them. So why would you trust to give them everything? 